And hello once again, everybody. Welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday, the 29th of June. And you know what that means. Time for a new mailbag. And it is a monster this week, you guys. 15, count them, packages. So I'm not going to screw around, waste any time. going to get right to these. Just one very quick announcement. Uh, you will want to be aware that tomorrow, the 30th, last day of the month and it will be the last day that you can nominate anything in the booktube sff awards so uh, i will put again the link below to the tumblr to the goodreads group and uh, everything you need to know in order to participate in in our little uh, homegrown award ceremony as it were uh, going to be a lot of fun nominations have been uh, very very enthusiastic all month long uh, nicole and elizabeth as you'll remember from the live show they just put this together on a lark and a lot of people have really gotten involved and, you know, and have been enjoying being part of it. And we're really grateful for that. So we're going to see how the nominations turn out because July, uh, we're going to, they're going to tally them all up and pick the short list. But this is it, the last 24 hours uh, for you to ensure that uh, your favorites from last year have a chance to end up on that tally. So uh, get to it, all right? And uh, as far as getting to it is concerned, let's get to it, uh, i.e. the books right now. And I'm just going to start out with uh, this little package from HarperCollins. And it is the premium mass market paperback edition of a book by James Rollins called The Sixth Extinction. Uh, and it uh, goes like this. A remote military research station sends out a frantic distress call, ending with a chilling final command. Kill us all. Well, must be serious. Personnel from the neighboring base rush in to discover everyone already dead. And not just the scientists, but every living thing for 50 square miles is annihilated. Every animal, plant, and insect, even bacteria. The land is entirely sterile, and the blight is spreading. To halt the inevitable, Commander Gray Pierce, that's his name, Gray Pierce, and Sigma must unravel a threat that rises out of the distant past to a time when Antarctica was green and all life on Earth balanced upon the blade of a knife. So, the old ones, then? I don't know. Uh, following clues from an ancient map rescued from the lost library of Alexandria. It just gets better. Sigma will discover the truth about an ancient continent, about a new form of death buried under miles of ice. From millennia-old secrets out of the frozen past to mysteries buried deep in the darkest jungles of today, Sigma will face its, great, face its greatest challenge to date, stopping the coming extinction of mankind. But is it already too late? So you have to pause for effect when you say a sentence like this. It's like that it goes. But is it already too late? See? Pause, pause, pause. Well, it's nice to know that of all the things that could have survived the burning of the Library of Alexandria, it was the one plot device that could have helped these people with their problem. But in any event, if you like this sort of paperback pot boiler, here you go. James Rollins delivers in the sixth ex in extinction. I keep wanting to say instinction, or uh, edition, or expression, or espresso. The sixth espresso uh, from James Rollins. And it is out, I guess, now-ish? Oh yeah, this is already out in paperback, so been out for a while. They only just now got it to me. Okay, here you go. And this next one is the Clockwork Crown, also from Harper. Uh, this came out uh, way back on the 9th of June, so uh, yeah, I guess better late than never, Harper. Uh, but in any event, uh, this will be the sequel to The Clockwork Dagger. The author is Beth Cato. It is a, a new steampunk series from a new author and uh, ha is apparently uh, really being enjoyed by the people who have read it so far. Don't want to uh, give away too many plot spoilers, but it just, say, uh, just says that the Clockwork Dagger was lauded for having a lighthearted feel in a beautifully drawn world populated by endearing characters. Balance and nuance are what made the Clockwork Dagger such a standout in 2014, and they're what make the Clockwork Crown such a brilliant conclusion to a stellar debut duology. The heroine, Octavia Leander, is a testament not only to Cato's writing, but to the fact that readers are craving complex characters with agency painted in shades of gray. Oh, you shouldn't have said shades of gray. It's out now. The Clockwork Crown, sequel to The Clockwork Dagger from Beth Cato, a steampunk duology. And while we're on the steampunk motif, uh, here is a new book called Illusionarium, and it is a young adult steampunk uh, from an author named Heather Dixon. And let's see what this one is all about. They didn't put a cell sheet in with this one. Okay, well, I'll just have to read this bit. Um, let's see. Far, far north in the cold aerial city of Feta Morgana, apprentice scientist Jonathan is preparing to leave for university. He doesn't know about Fantilium, the newly discovered chemical that allows people to share hallucinations, sometimes wondrous ones, sometimes appalling. Well, that's kind of interesting. He doesn't know he holds the rare skill to control the hallucinations to become an illusionist. He doesn't know that Fantilium can also open gateways to parallel worlds, or that he will soon begin an epic journey crossing cities and worlds to save his family, his friends, and his very reality. 
He doesn't know any of that yet. And when he does, will his compass continue to point true north or will it break apart? Ah, metaphor there. That actually sounds pretty interesting uh, and uh, quite a bit more original in many ways than you get from a lot of YA these days. Well, here we go, Heather Dixon's Illusionarium. And I guess because this is a finished copy, it's probably out in stores now-ish. So uh, here you go, Green Willow Press. Yeah, I'd say uh, YA needs a lot more uh, books about hallucinating teenagers. This one is from the Penguin Group. Okay, here is an arc for a book called The Desert and the Blade, and it's by S.M. Sterling. And it is a new novel in his ongoing series uh, about The Change. In fact, it's called The Change. That's the name of the series. Uh, this comes out September the 1st. And uh, The Change began uh, some years back, maybe 10, 11 years ago, with a book called Dies the Fire, which I reviewed. I liked, really, really liked bits of it. I found other bits of it uh, pretty draggy. Uh, but on the whole, decent idea. So I read the first three of them. Like I said, first book, okay. Second and third I liked quite a bit better, but I haven't really followed through on it. Uh, you know, just other things have come up. But in any event, he's kept it going for many, many volumes. And The Desert and the Blade is the newest one. Comes out September the 1st. And uh, this is a whole new story arc. So it's a new generation of characters who find themselves forced to adapt to a world without technology after a mysterious event known as The Change eradicated most of the human race. If you're a fan, look for the new one on September 1st, The Desert and the Blade. A big book, too. That was like 600 pages. And here we have something from Macmillan. And we're back to steampunk. This is a steampunk heavy week uh, this week. Uh, but this is an arc for uh, a book called Gideon Smith and the Mask of the Ripper, which is uh, the newest volume and I think a trilogy by this author, David Barnett. An alternate 19th century where steam powers king, airships fill the skies, yada yada. British Empire holds sway over most of the known world. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, romanticizing this imperial past of ours, following the events in Gideon Smith and the Mechanical Girl and Gideon Smith and the Brass Dragon. The young titular hero returns from his adventures in America, firmly established as the hero of the empire, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're, they're, they've come back to London to help the Metropolitan Police search for the serial killer known as Jack the Ripper, but just when London needs its hero of the empire, a villain from his past strips Gideon Smith of his memory and casts him adrift in the seedy underbelly of London. Okay, well this is uh, slated for an October 13th publication from Tor. Gideon Smith and the Mask of the Ripper by David Barnett. Uh, and a random penguin title. And it would appear that Golden Sun, the sequel to Red Rising, uh, the second book in that trilogy, is now available in paperback. I've already presented this in uh, hardcover and uh, the art for that, so yes, I'm behind on getting reviews of these up. Uh, but uh, they are planned, and evidently the third book, uh, called Morning Star, is uh, in the pipeline. So uh, look out for that. But Golden Sun's now in paperback. Or it will be out in paperback on July the 7th. And this is another random penguin title. And it's the third Dave vs. the Monsters title, Ascendance. The author's John Birmingham. Kids, there are no monsters under the bed. They're in the front yard. As a hard-working monster hunter, Dave Hooper tries not to bring his work home with him, but nowadays it's hard to keep them separate. Emails, cell phones, empath demons, they never let a guy rest. The Horde has been raising hell and leveling cities from New York to Los Angeles, keeping Dave and his fellow monster killer, Russian spy Karen Varchevsky, very busy. But when the legions of hell invade the small seaside town his boys call home, Dave has to make a call, save the world or save his family. Mm. Yeah, screw the world. In any event, yeah, here we go. Uh, John Birmingham's Dave vs. the Monsters. You know, apparently a very lighthearted uh, kind of series. So let me know if you wanted me to check these out. They do look kind of fun. I mean, he's got an axe on the cover. How can you have an axe in the story and somebody wielding an axe and not have fun, right? Okay, more random penguin. What have you got for me this time, you guys? Okay, it's the finished copy of uh, Scott Sigler's Alive in hardcover. Uh, comes out on the 14th. For those of you who forgot, because I have presented this uh, as an arc here on the mailbag, it says for fans of, list them off people, The Hunger Games, Divergent, and Red Rising. See, you just got to check off all those bestsellers uh, you know, to make sure you sell this book. Uh, anyway, Alive by Scott Sigler, a gripping sci-fi adventure in which a group of teenagers wake up in a mysterious corridor with no knowledge of who they are or how they got trapped. Their only hope lies with an indomitable young woman who must lead them not only to answers but survival. The girl, she knows only one thing about herself, her name, M. Savage, which was engraved on the foot of her coffin, yet she finds herself in charge. She is not the biggest among them or the boldest, but for some reason the others trust her. Now, if they're to have any chance, she must get them to trust one another. Whatever the truth is, she is determined to find it and confront it. If she has to lead, she will make sure they survive. 
Maybe there's a way out, a rational explanation, and a fighting chance against the dangers to come, or maybe a reality they cannot comprehend lies just behind the next turn. Alive by Scott Sigler comes out the 14th of July. You know, I feel like I'm kind of getting through this week's batch rather efficiently. That's nice. All right, this one is in all likelihood a tour title. Aha, I've been waiting for this. The Philosopher Kings by Joe Walton. It's the sequel to her book, The Just City. Uh, it's essentially a series of books that is one big thought experiment. The, uh, the, the characters are, have established a society, you know, based on, you know, the, uh, the ideas of uh, ancient philosophers. And here we have The Philosopher Kings, a tale of gods and humans and the surprising things they have to learn from one another. This comes out in stores tomorrow. 20 years have elapsed since the events of the Just City, the city founded by the time-traveling goddess Pallas Athena, organized on the principles espoused in Plato's Republic, there you go, uh, his idea of a utopia, and populated by people from all eras of human history, has now split into five cities, and low-level armed conflict between them is not unheard of. And I'm going to stop there so as not to allow for any more spoilers, but uh, I'm very eager to get into these, so The Philosopher Kings by Joe Walton, out from tour in hardcover tomorrow. It's kind of hot in this room. I don't think my air conditioning is quite up to snuff. This is a package from Random Penguin. Ooh, right on! It's the new Laundry Files novel by Charlie Strauss, everybody. The, Anni the Annihilation score, excuse me. Um, this happens on the 7th. And, uh, oh boy, I, I really enjoy this series. Basically, the whole idea is that there is an entire counterintelligence unit uh, that exists to fight off like monsters from other dimensions, like the, you know the Lovecraftian old ones and stuff like that. Uh, let's see the latest in this uniquely entertaining series about a secret branch of the British government that deals with the supernatural. I just said that, but less articulately. Uh, Dominique O'Brien or Mo lives a curious double life with her husband Bob Howard. To the average civilian, they're just boring middle-aged civil servants, but in reality, they're operatives working for the laundry, an obscure department of the British Civil Service that is charged with defending Britain against dark supernatural forces threatening humanity, which we've already been clear on. Mo's latest assignment is containing a rather unusual outbreak, ordinary citizens who are suddenly imbued with extraordinary superpowers. Unfortunately, instead of superheroes, these people prefer to be super pranksters. While the mayor of London is being disrobed and levitated in Trafalgar Square, while this would normally be a source of amusement for Mo and Bob, they're preoccupied with something else, something sinister, an antique Eric Zahn violin. See, that's a direct Lovecraft reference. Made of real human bone, was designed to produce music capable of slaughtering demons, and the laundry has entrusted it to Moe's care. Now it invades her dreams and yearns for the death of her husband, and it cannot be controlled, etc., etc. Uh, these are an absolute blast, and this one comes out the Annihilation score, so I guess musical score, uh, on July the 7th from Ace Books. And another big random penguin package, in which Django Wexler is wrapping up his Shadow Campaigns trilogy, assuming it's a trilogy. Uh, the Price of Valor, this comes out, as usual, on the 2nd. Uh, this is, you know, a flintlock fantasy series, and uh, it's a set in a richly imagined alternate 19th century, similar to our own, but imbued with a subtle and sinister magic. Uh, Vordan is under the precarious control of the uh, deputiers, gen or deputiers, deputires, depu deputiers, general, but led by a zealot who sees traitors in every shadow. Executions have become a grim spectacle, and the new queen finds herself powerless as the government tightens its grip. Like its predecessors, The Price of Valor is a perfect read for fans of military history and fantasy, and will keep re readers riveted with every turn of the page. So The Price of Valor by Django Wexler, uh, book three of the Shadow Campaigns, is out on the 7th of July. All oh, this catch-up reading I have to do! Makes me a sad panda, but also a happy one, because it's stuff to look forward to. Here's a big old package from Prometheus Books, which is Pyre. And this is the finished copy of a book I've already gotten in ARC form. It's The Chart of Tomorrow's. The author is Chris Woolrich. Uh, it's uh, the newest installment in a series called the Gaunt and Bone novels. Those are his characters. And uh, let's see when this is out. Did they stick a cell sheet in here? They usually... Yes, they did. So, like so many of the others, this is out on July the 7th. The poet Persimmon Gaunt and the thief Imago Bone who had sought only to retire from adventuring and start a family, but they never reckoned on their baby becoming the chosen vessel of the mystical energies of a distant eastern land. With their son Innocence, haunted by various factions hoping to use him as a tool, they kept him safe at the cost of trapping him in a pocket dimension of accelerated time. But now he's free, he's 13 years old, and he's rejected his parents and his destiny, quote-unquote, and has made dangerous friends in a barbaric western land of dragon-proud ships and rugged fjords. Desperately, Gaunt and Bone seek to track him down along with their companion Snowpine and her daughter, a girl is a joy, 
who was once trapped with innocence too. So here we go, the chart of tomorrow's a sweeping epic fantasy from Chris Wilrich from Pyre Books. And once again, Axe. All right, big week, but we're getting through it fairly efficiently. This package is from Simon and Schuster, so let's see what we have. Alrighty then, this is a book called The Iron Ship. The author is K.M. McKinley, and this is from the fine paperback imprint Solaris Books. Uh, I've recently been in touch with their new publicist. I think he's contacted a lot of us. But this is the first in a new epic fantasy series called The Gates of the World. Now, I admit, I've read the prologue. I find it to be a little bit maybe hewing too close to some, uh, you know, tried and true epic fantasy traditions. But that's just the prologue, so I, I'm hopeful this gets a lot more exciting as it goes along, because Solaris has a reasonably good track record of finding strong new talent in the genre. So K.M. McKinley's The Iron Ship, this is out uh, in paperback right now from Solaris. And I mean, this cover though, like, damn. Okay, second to last one here, folks, and this is a uh, another package from Random Penguins, so let's dig in, shall we? Okay then. Here it is. This is the finished copy of Ernest Cline's new book, Armada, as you know. Uh, he is the author of the crazy super popular Ready Player One, and this is a very long-awaited new book from him. Uh, this happens, let's see, where is it? July 14th. This arrives in stores in hardcover. And this is an absolutely monstrously huge self sheet. It's something like six or seven pages. Um, oh, here he is posing next to a DeLorean. You don't see too many of those these days. High school student Zach Lightman glances out his classroom window and spots a UFO. At first, he thinks he's going crazy. A minute later, he's sure of it, because the ship he's staring at is straight out of the video game he plays every night, a hugely popular online flight simulator called Armada, in which gamers just happen to be protecting Earth from alien invaders. Zach is sure he's lost his mind, but what he's seeing is all too real, and his skills, as well as those of millions of gamers across the world, are going to be needed to save Earth from what's about to befall it. So yeah, I know you're all waiting for this one. I do have it in the queue right away, because as you'll know, I've already gotten this in ARC form, I think maybe even just a week or two ago. So it's in the queue right now. Armada by Ernest Klein. Look for a review in short order. Last one, everybody. The last one, and it is a random penguin title. So let's see what we've got. Ooh, alrighty then. You will recall that I have already gotten these uh, in bound galley form, uh, but it's ABC Three Short Novels. This is a new vintage paperbacks edition. Uh, reprinting in omnibus form uh, three very early Sam Delaney novels, The Jewels of Aptor, a science fantasy story about a seafaring quest to find powerful magic jewels on a mysterious forbidden island where unimaginable danger lies. Also, The Ballad of Beta II, a future academic, searches for the truth behind an interstellar voyage, a journey over multiple generations that ended in tragedy. And finally, a fantasy novel, They Fly at Siron tells of the clash between a marauding army and a peaceful village at the foot of a mountain. From the peaks and ledges, a race of winged people observe both sides until they must make a choice. But uh, here we go. Very lovely uh, cell sheet, as you can see. Uh, this is available uh, on July the 7th in trade paperback form. And let's just see if there's anything else here that you need to know that I wasn't able to... No, no, here you go. ABC, three short novels. A chance, once again, to read some early Sam Delaney. Wow, you guys, that's it. That was a serious mailbag, was it not? Some amazing stuff in there. So you know the drill, as always. Fire up those comments, let me know which of these books looks most exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize in the review queue. Uh, also, please like if you enjoyed watching this video, share far and wide with your SFF rating friends, and above all, please subscribe to the channel. That is how SFF 180 grows. And SFF 180 has had a growth spurt recently. I'm very, very grateful for that. So let's build the family up, shall we? And don't forget one more time, tomorrow is the last day, BookTube SFF Awards nominations. Get your butt over there, make your voice heard, vote for your favorite 2014 novel. It's got to be a 2014 release, don't forget that. And until next time, I guess I will see all of you soon and happy reading. <laughs>